Welcome to Product Sense, the show where we talk about our favorite eco friendly tech products shared on Steam Hunt, a blockchain version of Product Hunt. I'm Dalio. And I'm Team Humble, and we're glad you're here. Good morning, everybody. Whoa. This is. Where's my mic, fam? I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. What, what are you doing? I said, so which are we doing first? Let's wow. fight it up and play the thing. Hi. Good morning. Can I plug my headphones? Yeah, in? I mean, oh whenever, my gosh. whenever you're ready. Wow. You, right. wow, what a power move. He just flipped the podcast on. You well, would, I think wow. I, I think a lot a lot of uh, podcasts are far too structured, if you ask me. I think the ones where do I wanna really live in a world where every podcast sounds identical, which is like incredibly super high production and incredible like stings and intros or do you do, I th I think people are going to crave the authenticity of the dysfunction of human beings rather than the AI calculated, orchestrated, packaged AI versions of everything. I I I I, I hate the idea. I hate the notion of things being too perfect. Something that something that, something about imperfections that I really really enjoy. It doesn't give me anything to strive for if everything's perfect. Is there music on? Yeah. Oh god, I'm so triggered already. All right. I mean, it's I don't I don't I don't think it's, I strive it's for Easter. perfection. It's Easter. We're on a chill down vibe. Are after, we? Yeah, oh, man. Look at, this man is in sh in bathing suit four shorts. Four pound shorts. For four pounds, he's four got pounds. his feet up on the couch. Totally unsustainable. He's these got are. sunglasses how on inside for some one pound fifty risky business esque reason. Uh, how is it possible? Like the man's I'm lounging, contributing to climate change right here, sitting uh. in this seat doing this. So yeah. Okay. Product sense. Welcome um, to product sense. Lots of news this week about uh, hunt tokens. Obviously, uh, they got listed on Daybit and CoinGecko over the last couple of weeks. There's been a rapid amount of transacting on there, over a million dollars of transactions. Um, I'm not quite sure on the daily, but it, it it jumped up, which is kind of a surprise to me. I expected it just to go to the floor. I expect it's just to be sold, 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 sold. But we actually had it jump higher than the IEO to 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.20, which it kind of launched on. I'm going to turn the sound down a little Thank bit. Thank you. I, I can see the look on Dale's face. That's all I can hear. I can't even hear you talk. Oh, I, well, I can hear myself talk. I've got my headphones on. you got headphones on? Yeah, that's why I'm yourself? hearing them because it's can, picking up from your mic uh, I can hear louder. It. I can hear it. So, yeah, it's been... It's been great. Everything I've wanted to see from the exchange... It, the exchange rounds has happened, which is kind of not something I'm used to in crypto. <laughs> well, it worked, yeah. It actually came off, which um, it feels good to. It feels real, real good to support a project that actually pays off. I kind of, I'm kind of disappointed a little bit that I didn't get more into Steam Monsters, but I think, I think you have to, you have to spend quite a lot of time in these communities to really understand, you know, like on a daily basis this isn't yeah. something you can come back to like for instance this morning like a, a blogger that i really admire on the platform which is sweet sssj i think it is she really puts time and effort into her photos and blogs and writing everything and i think she's a, a like a model steam blogger on the platform she's been away for four months like i don't know how i, I don't know if i could necessarily know what the hell was going on with daps and everything mm. if i went away for four months well she could have just did you check her uh comments no i didn't check her comments no sometimes people just don't post but they're there and they're still checking in and oh, they're right. engaging every day so i mean it could be either way okay. but i always look when people like it seems like people are gone a lot of times they're uh they're there but they're just they don't have a main post out. main post out okay I'm cutting out Okay. Um, can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you're cutting out because of your headphones or something. Yeah. All right. Well, stuff that. Um, Have you got it plugged in there? Yeah. What about this cable here? I don't That's know. It's all right. It's, don't worry about it. So yeah, um, it's been good. Like I think going on the Coin Gecko exchange has, has made it a bit. In the first 24 hours, it was a little bit clunky on day bit, but um, yeah, I've. I've been powering down effectively, I guess, some of my tokens. I feel like utilizing them in other things, uh, paying off subscriptions, getting a few little upgrades, paying down some debts. Like I feel like that year of work, it's kind of weird 
because it's in some ways it's like a decentralized job but you're not getting paid daily or, or weekly or monthly for it but like to put so much it's an investment of time and i guess we've put like time into it not yeah. expecting speculating i guess on the outcome of it and that's because once you get into cryptos you do kind of everything does become very much speculation economy because it could go up it could go down you've got like red candles you've got green candles but you never truly know where it's going but then in life do you anyway like i think i think steam blockchain and crypto is very much like the lonely hearts club like you always find those people who've been through the mill a little bit and they're look, trying to look for different ways to mm. live their lives a little bit yeah and actually speculation is probably better than what they had before which is kind of yeah. like you know you got so far with a job nine to five and it's like this is shit it's always going to be shit like even if i take another nine to five job that could be shit as well so like sometimes this kind of dabbling and playing and putting value here and there it, Pays well, it's off. Just, yeah, and this, I think this it, has. It, it appeals to people who like to like gaming. It appeals to people who uh, maybe have a, a gambling propensity for gambling, or uh, I don't know. Like it just, I think, I think it's intriguing. It's a bit like playing those like really crappy coin machines. Remember those coin machines where you'd put the quarter in and there'd be that pile of quarters and that that stair ledge would push the quarters forward. Yeah. And you'd be like, "Oh, just one more. Just one more. Just one more." Such I don't a know. bait and switch that thing. Uh, not to say that like projects and all cryptos are that way, but I think it appeals to the same type of people who want to try that stuff and want to be like they either don't have anything to lose or they they're comfortable and they don't mind losing a little bit. It's a you it's, know? it's a big post that I'm working on at the minute about shortcuts. It's like wherever the thing that frustrates me the most in life, and I do it myself, so I can't be mad about it because I, I take shortcuts in lots of things, and then it always comes back and kicks me in the ass. Mm. And I think that comes down from just time frame. We just want everything done now. We want everything to happen straight away. I think that comes from years and years and years of transacting on the internet you just expect things to just happen mm. so i think it's been a revolution for me in terms of not having to a get letters from a bank b not get called in to see the line manager i don't get any upsell i don't get as many problems as i get i used to get with banking you know an overdraft should be a fixed overdraft you shouldn't be able to go over your overdraft i always found all of these things uh, as <laughs> shortcomings or shortcuts that companies you know, pretend to to sell you on an idea and a lifestyle, and then take it all away in another way, and 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 it yeah. and it got to the point where I just got frustrated. It's not necessarily frustrated with people. I just got frustrated by the things that people sell to people. Like it just annoyed me. Yeah. So I'm working on that at the minute. It's a big post about short about shortcuts, and I see it in the news all the time. Like, and I, I read something and I just know that's going to be a problem in five years, or that's going to be a problem in ten years. Yeah. Uh, that that grumbling, by the way, is my stomach. I'm not I don't know if I'm getting hungry. We're, yeah, we're wired to like to favor instant gratification. Unfortunately, I think that's probably why we have such problems with climate change and uh, a lot of other things. But that's like the way we're wired. And I think especially if you are somebody who's like operating in a survival mindset, that's it doesn't your priorities are such that it's like, well, let me just get through today. Yeah, and uh, and I get that because I've been there. In uh, some ways, I I am there in in certain areas, but we're always like that's why people die of of lung cancer because they're smoking cigarettes because it's about like the thing that I want now instead of the thing that might happen later. Is it just in terms of evolution, we're wired to favor the now thing always. Mm. We've um, gone up four degrees since we started streaming, which is kind of weird because we started streaming nine minutes ago. I really? Just, well, that's what I don't understand. Maybe it was half an hour, but we've gone from 57 degrees to 61, four degrees in like half an hour. Well, that's just, yeah. It's kind of a shock, but I guess it is lunchtime. Well, it's not lunchtime. It's coming up to it's half ten. Up. So, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be roaring hot again today and tomorrow, I think. Uh, yeah, those short those shortcuts, though. So I think this is the reason why I get involved with, with dApps and decentralized apps and... You know, people bang on about the community around it, but actually, for me, there isn't a lot of community that I feel like I'm invested in. I feel like I'm invested in the main team and their roadmap yeah. and what they want to deliver. And I think if you're a, a reasonably smart human being, you can make your own speculation judgment call about 
are these people actually going to deliver on that? Mm. I think it's very important to constantly have your eye on the ball on that on that roadmap and are they delivering every week or every two weeks? And they've constantly done that over the last year, so that's kept me around. Yeah. Um, I never ever thought the tokens would ever be worth anything. Mm. If I'm honest, like just seeing that number there, that's just a number on a screen until it's a physical or it affects you in the real world. Yeah. Right. And I'll I'll say one thing. I think a lot of people don't get involved with this stuff because the next thing is is that how do you know if it's not in a bank mm. or if it's not in a physical form, then you know I'm sure a lot of people get panicked about that because of not having technical knowledge to be able to. How, how, who do I go to if that all goes to shit so I think that's yeah. a lot of reasons why people don't get behind these things but well, yeah I was thinking about it like earlier this week because um, because of what John went through mm. um, John is the well, I guess you'd call him the CEO of Cheddar and he's oh, also yeah, yeah. a steamian mm. and he had some wild stuff go down this week he, you could see he he did like a whole live stream about it um i think he's john, jo- Kersey. john Kersey on yeah. twitter C-U-R-S-I. but basically somebody somebody got his phone number released from at&t because they claimed he was he was deceased and they were with that they were able to pass his all of his two-factor off on um on a bunch of exchanges you know that's a classic hackers film move it's like it's, it doesn't even feel hackerish it feels more like like Ocean's Eleven, like I'm gonna go in and tell them, like put on a sad face and tell them that this guy's dead and maybe forge a death certificate. Like no, there's a yeah. It's just like I get that because there's obviously the second part of it would would be obviously the hacking part. They still needed all his passwords and stuff, but like. Well, it's just an old school way of going about it. You know, there's a scene in Hackers where they're competing for the last number of points. Angelina Joni and uh, I can't remember his name. It's a triple barrel name. Uh, they're competing to get the last points and it, it's his it's her is it his or her it's his it's his last hack is to hack into the the, the company that it works for um, and just make him deceased on the on the system because he he rings up from his office and says why haven't I been paid this month and he's like oh sorry sir but like we, we presume that you know we got an update on the system that that person had died so like it can trigger so many things, like unlock so many things. The fact that somebody can walk into, I mean, it's it's old school thinking. A branch, so whoever's yeah. done that, whoever's done that is using old school thinking because anybody can walk into a branch and and either fake paperwork, the timing of it, bank holiday weekend, you probably got. But that's what the G. I mean, not to give this person any like glory or credit, but like, that's the genius of it is that the old school spots are where the most vulnerability is going to be. You shouldn't, shouldn't be able to do swim uh, sim shop that swapping like that. Yeah. You shouldn't be. There should be a time period. There should be like a thirty day, not grace period, because that sounds weird. But like, there should be a period of time where you can't do that. Yeah, I mean, because what's the rush if the guy's dead? Yeah, I mean, if it's an investigation, <laughs> then maybe. Like, but. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and so that that made me think about, and maybe it's just because I'm I haven't really looked into it as much as I should have but like it seems like they're in crypto there is a very shrouded uh, nobody really likes to talk about security or how they manage their security because that in and of itself is is a vulnerability yeah and so how are people supposed to learn how to manage their stuff you know there's people in third world countries who are who are in the crypto world and they're running everything from their phone yeah like I couldn't imagine keeping my my keys straight and yeah. you know all of my stuff, but it's also something that it that you don't see people teaching or talking about because they don't wanna reveal how what their methods are so it's a I think it's tricky for somebody new to crypto to learn that stuff yeah, but then we've the the, the argument on the flip side of that coin is that's the reason why we're in this in the in the mess we're in today is that we've we've trusted. We've moved on from the sticking money under the mattress to I mean, let's put it in. Let, let's put it into the let's put it into the bank because the banks are safe, stable, Fort Knox, yada yada. Right. You know, and then then we find out that it doesn't matter if they're secure. We don't know if the gold that they say has really is in there. Well, well yeah, because it's ob- obfuscation. I can't say it properly, but yes, it it the the notion and it again it feeds into the speculation economy. Is one country bigger than another country, or has more money than another country because it has a bigger workforce or arm you know uh, 
army or you know it's just mm. at the end of the day it's it's what you it's what you trust uh, just spreading that and diversifying that over a number of things rather than just you know as it's called in the scene like the attack vector the surface of that you know it shouldn't be so spread out that it like John was saying they got into one account and they started rapidly going through all the other accounts so once they got through his 2FA which is kind of still a weak source thing to put in 2FA and then finding out that actually people can do the swim uh, sim swapping and sending yeah. that text message to somebody else's phone or somebody else's number it's not hard for somebody who's got teammates to be able to go into somebody's AT&T or somebody's billing account get that number do some redirection yeah exactly you know that that stuff that the second phone, factor is phone freak crap. <laughs> phone freaking's been around for ages and it's just evolved well yeah but that's what i'm saying is like the more the it seems like the more analog and the more old school ways are actually becoming the preferred ways because the, they're where the vulnerabilities are well technology Those are the places that are not moving humans on. are the vulnerabilities i mean te technology is moving on at pace and we cannot we cannot keep up with it yeah and it's it's going to come down to the people who, who understands the, the the mathematics of things and the exploits of things and the vulnerabilities of things and you know in some ways crypto crypto and especially quantum encryption is probably going to be the only ways that people can truly say that is mine mm. you know because if people are walking in and using old school like ways to be like this person's linked to this account because he's alive and here is his records and his passport and everything else, all of those systems are on constant attack every single day. Yeah. Every single day, like twenty four seven around the clock, everybody's poking, 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 poking. So. I mean, yeah, no, like, but also you know what you brought up with the banks, it just seems like now you can't really afford to not have a personal responsibility meaning like you know all these problems come from when like john's big message of that video was like don't leave your shit on exchange no, no don't let it be somebody else's problem no. like get your stuff in a hardware wallet that personal responsibility even in terms of like we talk about food all the time you know all those things that over the years our society has kind of like offloaded onto a middleman and was like you deal with it then when those things go down and those things become vulnerable, then we're like, then we're like totally stuffed. You know what? It, you know what it is as well. I think a lot of people who've used banking, you know, whenever there's something gone wrong, it can take weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months for the bank to actually return the money or even send you a letter. And I think some people probably think that, oh well, you know, my cards, you know, this has happened, this has happened, or I had a glitch on my Wi-Fi, or this logged out, logged me back in again, and they kind of, they, they haven't got a an urgency to fix it. Yeah. But the thing is, nowadays, somebody can make something malware or software to log into the top 10 crypto sites with your new login details that they managed to acquire and just literally blast through it and start transferring that stuff out. I think it must be very difficult for agencies globally to, to keep track of all of that. Yeah. To keep track of all of those engines. Yeah. And and so then, then it becomes faster and faster and faster. The more innovations that we have, the more ways that that information can be you know but on the flip side of that coin for, in a in a kind of positive note on product sense is that the innovations that are out there if a lot more companies are going towards blockchains for the immutability of say using maths to say this happened at this time and it's connected to this thing like for instance I had a can of beer the other day with a with a block uh, with a uh, QR code on the front of it and it was pretty gimmicky because it was from a company in Ireland that had come up with a little, I guess they wrote a little program to be able to print every single can with this code on it. But it just shows you that the the distance between accountability and product are getting closer. Yeah. Which has to be a good thing for everybody because at some point the the hack day weekends or the hack day contests online are going to be about exposing that information because we a lot of information is behind the scenes yeah right and the people who have access to it right now are the ones who have have learned how to access it and and display it and manipulate it in certain ways so yeah like and there's never been there's never been any motivation or there's never been like any reason for those 
that that data to come out of silos because there hasn't been a demand for it. But I think it's so important for people to see a can of beer on a shelf in a mainstream store and be like, oh, well, these guys are giving us this information. What about you? You know, what about like... Well, I think the silos that, are I closed. Think, I think the silos are closed because bottom lines are more important than sharing, right? Yeah. But Unfortunately. When, but when, when the access to that information becomes a selling point and that becomes part of why someone mm. buys your product then you can't afford not to but i don't i don't even think people are at the level of even wanting or thinking they they have the right to know any of that information so one person being the one out there it's almost like you know it's almost like all the like the whistleblowers like the julian assange's of the world people don't feel like there's even uh, that information's even out there or they're not even they're not even thinking about that in their day to day until somebody's like Till it oh, affects hey. them. Till yeah. It, till it affects them. Yeah, and brings it out into the open. And then it becomes like, then the accountability raises for everybody. Like, okay, well, what do you, you know, what are you doing? We watched that, that silly Netflix movie, The Circle, the other day. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it's obviously um, a mass produced Netflix movie. But they're, they did kind of talk about data silos. And there was this whole theme about becoming transparent and what that means for personal privacy and you know what that means for humans but also what it means for politicians there's a politician in in the movie where she was like okay well my office is going to be live streamed you know 24 well, 7 no matter is, what and you can see all my meetings well this is the dream of decentralization though is that the 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 people behind the scenes who <laughs> the irony is you need you probably need a hacker in your it department to be able to pull something off, like that off so if he becomes or she becomes disgruntled enough, like yeah. she can unpick that centralized governance into decentralized very, very quickly, right? But here's the irony is that we've, we've gone for decades and decades and decades not having a conversation about distribution and greed. And yeah. we're at a point now where we have end to end, Dell needs to sell servers uh, to, to startups in Silicon Valley to fill data centers data uh, and then the startups need data for on the on those things to be able to have an income stream to be able to pay for the server companies and then it becomes a vicious circle it's like you're constantly in this 360 of like more clients more servers more sus unsustainable like mining of lithium and sand and we've got you know we've got to the point now where you only have to look around i mean the it's crazy that we end up that we have paper notes. I mean, how much of the Amazon have we cut down just to make fucking paper currency around the world? Don't get me started on for every single country. Two p coins. Yeah, I don't understand. Like half. Don't get me we started. used to have a half penny coin. For and you, the only thing I could ever buy with it was that they they even changed the food, they even changed the sweets to half penny sweets and made them smaller, so that you could spend these half penny sweets. Like it was almost like a a crack cocaine addiction of like yeah. what are you going to do with these half penny coins oh well like, you can get sweets with it it's like stupid yeah it's like a real bad ico anyway it's like, well i'm stuck with these <laughs> stuck with this currency i better use it on something yeah yeah well i have some picks if you want to go through some um yeah, let's do it. some awesome hunts of the past couple of weeks we're a little behind i think this was really supposed to be last week's so if these hunts are they're not stale they're just pre-loved um, this one's awesome. It's called Lava May, mm -hmm. and it is based from a a charity who's converted a an old bus into showers for the homeless. Oh, cool! Yeah, um, I just love that idea. I you know I know that like you and I kind of follow van conversions and and old bus conversions and things like that, and I thought that was such a smart way to to use a van. So they park up and you know. If yeah, they do that. In, if you're there and you need a shower, you can take one in this van. There's a bunch of charities across the country that do that, and they have washing machines and showers in. Mm. So, you know, human. Uh, I think it's, I think it's kind of, I think it connects people back to people again. If if somebody's living on the street, and they're dirty, and you know you feel dehumanized by that, the ability to have a shower yeah. or to wash your clothes. I mean, it just might save somebody's life or or trigger them enough to, like, pick themselves up to, like, all right, I want to do something. I want to try again, you know? Like, I want to I wanna keep going. I don't yeah. want to just, like, go and score drugs every day. I know I'm stereotyping here, but, like, I don't want to just fall into a, an abyss of, like, I don't want to get a job. I don't like the system, you know, like, 
my, my life's falling apart and then you smell as well yeah it's a momentum thing and also in terms of hygiene there are obviously yeah you can develop medical problems of course so that's then the problem just express it you know like exact exacerbate i can't even think of the word exacerbates that's yeah. the one yeah yeah just makes it's it true. bigger and like you know if that person ends up in the hospital or they end up you know somebody that's that's also a tax on the system as well so things like this that are preventative are um are really cool and they've also built this um mobile hygiene how to to toolkit okay so they're uh they've in, they claim that they've inspired over 100 plus new mobile hygiene programs modeled after theirs which is really cool that they kind of took what they learned in developing this and they kind of just made made the whole project open source i wish i wish every company did that i know i wish every company had a blueprint or a toolkit even the ones that run for two years and then shut down i would love to see their white paper at the end and say this is how we all went wrong black paper at the end yeah and they're dead this is how it went all all wrong well, yeah, I mean, we so had that the some, next startup some, can learn from it, you know. Yeah, there are some pages that that do that, but it should be a requirement. I totally agree. Start your service, get advice, ask questions, and help um, each other find solutions. And then they've also are connecting people who are doing these projects so that they can help each other and share resources. So. That's cool. You Super should, cool. Should should hire the homeless people to drive the vans. Yeah, why not? And Elon should put a bit of money aside for some to of his SUV electric. vans. Yeah. I'm down. I'm super down. Um, the next one that I have is actually this one was hunted, and I had to delist it because it's it was a duplicate, but I missed it the first time around. Okay. <laughs> so it's been around for a while. It's called CleanPlanet.io, mm-hmm. and it is an eco citizen eco citizens rewarded powered by the um, Steam blockchain. So what I'm assuming it is is um, it kind of like Actifit, but for actions taken for um what's active fit for people who don't know oh well active fit is like <laughs> everything is the something of something but it's almost like it's similar to fitbit where you can link up your activity tracker whether it be an apple watch or a, or fitbit and get rewards for i think it's ten thousand steps is five thousand i believe steps. yeah any day that you hit over five thousand steps creates a post um and um you got potential of getting it upvoted by by people right. on, by the dap on the steam blockchain yeah right so it's and also cool just for walking yeah so this one is um join clean planet and earn money by cleaning up the planet prove it take a photo or picture of of you or your friends while you pick up litter or while um of what you have collected in public trash upload it um to steam it and get reward get rewarded for it so they're doing like an upvote um incentive and actually, it looks like Roland P is one of the top donators for this, um, yeah, for this service as well. So just check that out. Like, I mean, it's been around for a while. Like I said, because the it was first hunted back in December. But um, if that's something that you're interested in it, or that's the type of content you already make on Steam, it, you know, I th- jump in. I think a lot of those projects um, tie into the things that you do anyway on a daily basis, or maybe just showing people, you know. Yeah. what things to do could make them feel a certain way or like build in some kind of um build in some kind of motivational ethics of trying to treat the world around you a little bit better and a little bit differently but also i think eventually all of those tokens will be displayed in almost some kind of like mozilla backpack kind of thing like certification a mutable certification and in return that will be used as as reputation management yeah so if people are like instead of going into an interview room and somebody's saying i can see on your paper cv here that you haven't done anything for three years you haven't worked for anybody for three years however if i you know click this link or i've got this qr code in this thing i can see that you've invested your time in these communities and it's a mathematical proven thing that you did you know because yeah. anybody can write on a cv that you did something for so many years you can't prove it I mean, it's always that, yeah. like, ring up this phone number to talk to my uh, referral. Yeah, who's your best friend, Johnny, down yeah. the block, who's Using not Using asterisks even... in, you know, yeah. a, 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 a phone system that you can download for free, uh, routed to Johnny in Brooklyn somewhere. It's you always know. Johnny in Brooklyn. It's always Johnny in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, so this is really cool, and I think a lot of these projects have popped up because communities are so late to the game, um, but... 
even so, they have a Discord you can jump in. And I think if this is something that you care about, it can feel a little bit discouraging, feeling like taking in the apathy of the world around you. And I think it's nice for people to be able to plug in together, follow each other's posts, and see what everybody else is doing. Maybe that's going to be the next big thing. Maybe like hardware rings very similar to the Fitbit and stuff. Maybe ones that you connect and sync in different uh, dApps. You know, like different dApps that do different things with tracking and stuff. Mm. Um, maybe that's going to be a big thing. Yeah. You know, so One because because a lot of a lot of people won't play around with this because there's like four different passwords for Steam and there's, you know, I have to have a wallet for this and why do I have to have a different wallet for that? You know, a lot of people are just not going to do that early mm. adopter stuff until it's like one click, like a remote control. Like Google. It yeah. needs to be like yeah. Google. But, but, but with what we've learned yeah. from not being Google, well, you know, yeah. we're trying to be like Google. Uh, and this last one actually is your hunt, which I appreciated very much, Lee. Uh, okay. It's called Tear, Tear Market. Okay. Do you want to explain this since it's your hunt? Yeah, with the, the bag. So the the thing with the tear market, which I absolutely love and it should be absolutely everywhere, is the ability to go into a, a shop and buy everything without packaging. Mm. And also, I think if you had this like a market space, like in a town or a city or a village, a place that you could go and turn it into a day market almost, whereas at the weekend you can just have it like everything fresh on display. Yeah. I just, I just think we, we desperately, desperately need to find a way to, to really approach uh, waste and our, our relationship to it because we're quite comfortable to go and get like o only recently in the last year have we started to use reuse containers for like oh we finished the coffee we'll put rice in it. I love the idea of going with my containers and having just those containers. Yeah and going to these places and buying coffee and tea bags and all these things that are open Just and on raw. display, all raw, like, ready, you know, no containers, zero waste. And yeah. I also love the idea that that promotes a different kind of lifestyle. Instead of a consumption-based one of, like, buy more, buy more, you know, go into town, walk out with loads and loads of bags, I love the idea of going into a place, a market, or a space where people are actually taking those raw ingredients and making food and and having those discussions around a table will be less about i want to take an instagrammable photo here it'd be like isn't it cool how you know we've taken these all we're doing is removing the packaging of it but it also feels like you're removing the mystery of it as well yeah it, it brings it brings up a bigger dialogue for me that if you're sitting in a space like that and you have a plate of food and you can see all these open boxes of like raw materials the abstraction of the the brand and the packaging yeah, and the marketing sure. and the shit on the front of it like removing all that removing these layers of abstraction between you and the food and yeah. the production of it i think is valuable because it gives you a life lesson of like what else can i fucking remove that is yeah. that is misinformation for me but it, and it also forces you to actually look at look feel taste smell like actually use your senses to evaluate the quality of something mm. rather than like what you said the branding yeah. like teaching you that you know, like we have, there's that meme of like expectation versus reality when it's like right. show something on the box and you open it and you're like, what the hell? Like they probably wouldn't sell any of those if they didn't, if there wasn't the box in between you and the final product, because it's like, this is weird and gray and but they this trade on impulse to look like this. A lot of those, you know, sandwiches shops and stuff, they trade on impulse, yeah. right? They don't trade on like what's good for after the transaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like we need your three fifty. We're gonna package it in in your one hundred forty second Twitter brain. I need that that that, and I'm out. Like, but yeah. that doesn't help. That helps the company printing the cardboard boxes to stay in business, but it doesn't help the the bigger thing of like, oh shit, some of this stuff might actually end up on in a scrapyard, not scrapyard, but like a recycling center on land for the next fucking 10 years. Yeah. And some of it's going to leak into, into the ocean. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a weird kind of setup that legacy and history is an interesting one to me. We've just seen that the, the Notre Dame go up in flames and within 24, 48 hours, a billion pounds like put forward by millionaires to fix it. It's interesting that, somebody's legacy and having a, a building like that in your life maybe they live near it 
uh, and then seeing it destroyed invokes them to react with money to fix it, to restore the imagery of it. Yeah, I just read some data today that that billion pounds could fix the ocean plastic problem. And yet, so and yet, I'm not saying that the Notre Dame is any less valuable, but surely the planet that the church is built on is more valuable to be maintained rather than stick a glass roof on it and be done with it. Like yeah, well, 200 we're million, quarter of a million. Tidal something. waves and, and like plate tectonics are shifting. Things going to go down again anyway. So it's like, it's exactly like you said, and it, but it's, it's, it's another one of those things that has to do with um, the immediacy. Yeah, I'm more interested in, in blending and adapting our relationships with something and not trying to be not trying to have a superiority complex about knowing something or approaching something in a better way than somebody else but like just being realistic mm. about the fact that there's billions more of us on the planet than there ever was and if you look at any of the numbers they don't add up they yeah. just don't add up well the this website that from from tear market so the the tear market.com from your hunt says that the average American creates individual American creates about four pounds of trash per day. Okay, no. So just for yourself, multiply that times a year, and that's 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 crazy. It makes me so sad. That makes me really sad. Like, so there. Is, I think. But you see, here's here's the problem as well. Is the the irony is is that people companies will have put legislation in place i know bt does this in terms of if you move into an area and you might have a better broadband service than bt they have put legislation in place they've like greased some monkeys and some lawyers and some legislators to be like we you know we've been around the longest and we deserve 80 percent of the business so even if you have a better product a bit mm. like this this marketplace right mm. all of a sudden that place doesn't need to have packaging anymore so the company who's making the packaging who's been around forever who's yeah. been doing deals and paying little bits of money in to keep some of these politicians in favor like they're having they're seeing their whole business being eradicated and yeah. so what they're going to do they're going to they're going to react to that or they're going to make problems for it and that's what gets me is that we want the solutions but not at the expense of the legacy of something that you've built at some point you have to stand up and go this is out of date yeah. The way I do things is out of date. Well, like, you and if know, you if you're a real realist, you'll know that's probably on a daily basis. People who sold horses were probably really bummed when the Model T Ford came out. You know, I mean, it it does sound, it does sound harsh, and I understand that those people's livelihoods on the line, but ain't nobody gonna have a livelihood if the planet can't <laughs> can't sustain us being here. Or we it. can't keep the lights on. Buys it. We have two thousand dollar folding phones that nobody fucking asked for. Don't get me started. Nobody that. asked for that. Well, I, I do want to make one unfollow point. Unfollow me on all social media if you have an unfolding phone. Okay. Um. There's something really cool here that they sell, but I, I kind of wanted to like just drop in like a, a bit of a some advice or a hack. So I think a lot of times that the the big resistance to eco things like remember that that cup that i hunted a couple weeks ago yeah the husk the one. thing was fucking nine dollars like yeah. that's kind of crazy um that always seems like the the knee-jerk reaction where like the shoes made of ocean plastic right you know 162 dollars like normal people can't afford that it would be nice if i was jessica beale to be like all organic hippie princess and buy all this junk but th what they sell here is a zero waste market kit and it has um it has a little bag. It's got some bamboo straws, some um, cutlery, some knives and forks, cutlery. a little <laughs> cutlery, uh, little things to you know, to facilitate the fact that you're buying stuff without packaging. And the thing is sixty two ninety nine. So like I don't know. I see that and I'm like, okay, hipster eye roll. Give me a break. But um, you could look at it two ways. It includes straws, utensils, uh, produce bag, carton, cotton produce bag, uh, beeswax wrap, which is really cool. You can actually make that yourself. Um, just if you feel like overwhelmed or you you can't spend the money on this type of stuff, but you want to make a difference, look at what these people are selling and then go source it yourself. Go look on Amazon for a cheap, like, I bet you could build this pack 
for yourself on Amazon with all of these things to be sustainable for like 12 bucks and not $62. But not only that, if you buy in bulk, you can enable your whole friend network as well. Yeah. Don't do Have it a just, freaking party about it. Don't do it just for yourself. Like For sure. Do it to, for your friend network so that you you don't feel weird and they don't feel weird because sometimes people don't want to do it because they don't want to copy. Some people don't want to do it because they don't want to be like, you know, the outsider. And actually normalizing it's it's about normalizing behavior right some people don't want to change stuff until something it's a bit like bitcoin right people jumped in when they saw the price going up and then panicked when it just like dropped out and lost a lot of money in the process like the problem is the planet isn't going to be one of those equations that we can just restart and pick up again and and oh i i made a mistake yeah like, we've been making mistakes even if you don't believe in climate change Right. Even if you don't believe in the data, if it's some kind of hoo ha, like crazy, crazy government conspiracy or whatever, like, can you take that gamble? Sure. Can you really take that gamble of being being wrong? Right. And and if you do, well, that's because you want to watch the planet burn, and that's on you. So like, yeah. Whatever. But my point mostly is the fact that these are obviously Terra Market is a company. They're trying to turn a profit so they can stay stay in business and do what they believe that they need to be doing um but i think that the price of of entry of reducing your waste it can be absolutely zero or you know very very little you don't need to buy these kits in order to to make a difference because i think people see a price like 62 dollars for a couple bags and they just throw the whole thing the whole idea out the window when it's like you know we buy we buy instant coffee that comes in a glass jar and when it's done we rinse it out and use it to store rice. That costs us absolutely nothing. So just have a think about the trash that you use and what, what you already have that you can reuse instead of being like, oh, well, now i got to buy a $62 kit of bamboo bullshit. And I'm not going to make rent because I'm trying to save the earth. I kinda, I'm kind of interested in, in optimizing more than anything. I think in the, in the short term, short to medium term, getting everything sustainable is actually going to be unsustainable. If that yeah. makes any sense, well, like to gonna, actually change stuff is gonna, it's gonna we're gonna it's have gonna a, be taxing. It's gonna be taxing. We're gonna it's gonna take us a long time to change the narrative of, you know, the we're, we're starting the storytelling that we have out there in the world is very like cosmetic right now. Yeah, it's very shallow. I totally agree. So I totally agree. W- we don't we don't have a we we're wasting more in trying to tell that you know like we're almost passing the information off to somebody else in the hope that somebody else will take care of it mm-hmm. but it's going to take all of us to do a little bit you don't have to gr- you don't have to be a green warrior but you the the success should look like optimization it shouldn't look like acquisition yeah i mean maybe try to reduce your daily trash waste to 3 pounds a day instead of 4 yeah. over a year that's 365 less pounds of trash out there yeah. i mean it's like with anything if you're a fitness person or you or you know you you choose to eat a certain way the biggest changes in life come incrementally from a lot of people yeah. all at once so yeah. don't be overwhelmed when you see stuff that's like cleverly branded and overly expensive you know you don't do, need it you don't need it don't just need do what it. you can just don't need it <laughs> all right i'm gonna play the outro now and then we're gonna grab some lunch and then uh we're gonna be back and do uh positively negative after that okay sounds good all right guys see you next week thanks for tuning in bye you can support the show by heading to anchor.fm forward slash product sense and clicking support this podcast or by checking out any of this week's sponsors you can subscribe to product sense wherever you listen to your podcasts and you can hang out with us on discord by visiting smarturl.it slash talkback thanks for listening we'll see you next time